Good morning. <laughs> I have definitely tried to uh, film this video probably 52,000 times. I have no idea how to go about filming this video, but I'm just going to do it and treat it like a video diary type thing because um, going through a lot of changes right now and uh, honestly they're very interesting and I can't even really wrap my mind around it so I honestly feel like making a video will help me do that. Um, the past month of my life has been, I don't want to call it like bad or hell or anything because it's been a lot of really good changes, but um, a lot of changes, uh, a lot of really intense, um, scary changes. For example, my parents found out that I am involved in the adult entertainment industry. Um, I've been a dancer for over four years, almost five years now. and. I completely support myself, I love my job, um, and I work over in Southern California and have just been able to travel and live my life, go to college, it's been amazing. I am not ashamed to work my job at all. Um, and up until four years into this, I had no indication in my mind that I wanted to get into porn or anything like that. So. The fact that I'm making this video and sitting here right now talking about this is like kind of mind blowing for me, but I'm really excited to talk about it um, and kind of share my experiences as I go through them. This is all completely, completely new for me. So basically, um, I'll start with like how, why I decided to sign with them. I'm not going to give all of the reasons. It goes way deeper than what I'm going to share here, but um, I don't even fully understand why I'm deciding to do this other than I want to. So I, the past month of my life has been um, interesting, not bad, not in a bad way, but uh, just a lot of changes have, have happened. So obviously my parents found out I'm involved in sex work, that I've been a dancer, they don't love that. Um, my parents, as in my mom, I am not very, close with my real dad. I don't really have a relationship with him. My stepdad's awesome. He also knows, unfortunately. Um, but that really freaked me out because somebody basically took my TikTok account and outed me to my parents as being both a sex worker and gay. Um, that really sucked. Uh, my parents are very old fashioned, I guess, when it comes to that type of thing. And although I love them, um, that was hard for me to talk to them about without being the one to announce that to them, you know? So the main thing holding me back from being very public with my name was my parents. And now that they know, now that everyone knows, um, what's holding me back from going bigger, you know? And so the second thing that happened was I was pretty much just dropped to the curb by people who I thought were my best friends. Um, I was in a polyamorous relationship and the longer I get away from being in that relationship, like it's been a while now, I, the longer I realized that I was just there to better their individual relationship. And it made me realize how much I literally only have myself um, and I need to rely on myself and get back to that um, mentality again. So I quite literally the same day was going through this breakup, I got an email from um, this agent and at first I didn't, wasn't really sure what it was and wasn't sure if it was legit, but I remembered I had reached out to an adult entertainment agency about a month prior with my TikTok account because I was looking for some guidance. Um, I worked with agencies in the past when I did acting and modeling and I had okay experiences with them. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna reach out and talk to somebody else. So. I didn't hear back from them for a while. Um, quite literally the same day I'm going through this breakup, I get an email back from this agent asking if I would like to do a Zoom meeting, that he really liked my content, he liked my TikToks and stuff. And I was like, sure, um, like, sounds good. Uh, I'm always open to looking into opportunities. And I hadn't exactly looked through the agency yet, but I did get the vibe that it was more like adult entertainment. Um, literally it says like adult influencers, like in their bio, um, on their Instagram. So I knew it was like an adult agency, whether it was porn or, uh, dancers or whatever. So I did some research for the zoom call and I'm seeing, you know, these big names, 
big names like on their website and I'm starting to get more and more excited and just starting to think, okay, this could be a new exciting step for me, a new change. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to just meet with this guy. So we set up a meeting time. This was a few weeks ago. I want to say three, four weeks ago now. And, um, <laughs> he, he honestly was not what I expected, but he was way nicer, way cooler than what I expected. And we had like a great conversation, um, surrounding the agency and I felt very uh, comfortable. So I said, okay, I'll come out and meet with you guys, um, in person. Cause I live in San Diego. This was all being held in LA. So I was like, I want to come out, see the property, the agent, um, manages this whole entire mansion property. It gives me definite Playboy vibes, like Playboy mansion house vibes. Um, mansion house. But I, Okay. So I don't remember at all exactly where I left off because it is a whole new day. Um, I don't remember what happened, but I just stopped filming. I was like, I'm going to do this again in the morning. Um, so I, it was the week before I was supposed to go and meet all the girls. I get this invitation from, um, as I was saying, like it's called Livewire. It's just like a casting, um, company that sends you notifications and, you know, lets you know when you have calls or scenes or, um, and I haven't had any scenes yet, but when I do get scenes, you know what I mean? I'll get a text message that lets me know. So I get a text message that says that they're having a party, um, that's sponsored by, I don't honestly don't know if I can say the brand's name, but I'm going to anyways, because they gave me a huge goodie bag of stuff that I want to show you guys. Um, so it's Doc Johnson was the one sponsoring, I believe this party. Cause it was like Doc Johnson X and then my agency. So, um, I need to, I feel like I need to brush my hair. I like feel a lump. Yeah. I knew it was there. I could sense it. Um, so I get this notification. It's from four to I think 10 PM and I'm supposed to be there. So I'm like, cool. Um, because it came through this, thing that lets me know when I have new jobs, this app. Um, I, if that makes sense, I assumed that I had to be there at exactly 4 PM. Like that was my call time. That is important because it's a big reason why I was freaking awkward. So, um, the week it's the week before I make an appointment to get my toes done because my toes were like so nasty. I hadn't had them done in, I want to say months, but it probably was more like Actually, yeah, it was probably like two months, which is really gross for strippers. Um, you should never always have your toes done. Um, so, oh yeah, so I'm going, I'm going to this um, nail appointment and I go to the nail salon immediately. It was just weird. Like the parking was weird. That wasn't their fault. Um, it's just the area I live in and I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I am like, as and um confused it was like early in the morning and i go in it, everything's pretty and cute and everything seemed very normal like very sanitary if it seemed gross i probably would have left probably i don't know and um i go to get my pedicure and the <laughs> stinging i went through when this lady like squirted some solution of something on me was ungodly I like the amount of stinging I felt I was I thought it maybe just hadn't been because I hadn't had my toes done in a couple months but that doesn't even make sense looking back because I've regularly gotten my toes done for years and never had this issue I'm sitting there she's doing her thing um, I'm noticing like she keeps having to push like the alcohol pad on me because she keeps making me bleed like this woman was not gentle at all. And I kept trying to tell her like, that's really hurting. Like it's really stinging. And she would like turn the little fan on and that helped. So I kind of just let her do her thing. So I leave the nail salon and I'm going about my week and my feet weren't hurting or anything. They were hurting after the appointment for about an hour, but they stopped and I went about my life. And I wasn't really paying attention to my toes too much. So fast forward, this is important, trust me, because it just quite literally exploded in my face. Um, you'll see why. And 
I'm driving, the time comes, I'm on my way to the party, I got all cute. Um, I honestly, my extensions were not having a good hair day that day. I don't know what it was, but they decided they did not want to be participating in um, be looking cute that day. I felt raggedy, to be honest with you. Um, usually, when I wash my hair and like the same day and it's been a good like hair washing day, put some oil in it, we're good. But I don't know if it was because it was humid or what, but I was feeling a little crazy. Um, I had just driven two hours to be at this party, uh, because I live a little bit more south than where the agency is located at, and I get there, I'm sitting in the front, I'm, first of all, having a freak out session, because I realized that this, um, property is probably half a mile from my real dad's house, and I am not open about anything regarding him, but I don't have much of a relationship with him for good reason, um, and... I was freaking out, to be honest with you, just being near him and um, passing all of the streets that I used to walk on. There was like a yogurt shop I used to go to all the time as a kid uh, when I still lived with him. And it was triggering to say the least. Um, I wanted to cry, but I had eyelashes on. And I, at that point, pretty much wanted to vomit, like to be quite frank with you. Because I'm about to meet 50 bajillion new people. All of this is going through my head. and. I'm going through my old neighborhood of my dad's like house and I don't know what I did but I just kind of pulled something out of me where I was like I'm it, I'm not the same person I was you know when I was living back here I, I'm this was a decade ago I was living over here you know I'm not gonna let it ruin this opportunity now so I park um it's this house is located on like the back area of like a big main street in LA or like Woodland Hills area. And um, I park, I found great parking, which honestly I was really nervous about finding parking in that area and having to walk like in my little bikini, like up LA in the street. And um, I sit there, I'm sitting there, I'm like gathering myself and I'm putting, you know, putting my last minute hair and makeup touches on. And because I was driving so long, I was wearing like comfy shoes and I went to change into my sandals. I'm going to include the video, but quite literally big fat trigger warning because it's disgusting. Disgusting. I take off my shoes and my socks and my toes literally look like Pillsbury toe, like dough boys, toe boys. But, and they still look kind of gross now, but I have pictures of everything I'll show you guys in videos. Um, my toes were, the skin had lifted off of the tops of them and was bubbling like a giant fat blister, but it wasn't a blister. I don't, it was really weird. Um, it kind of looks like when you get a tattoo and you have like an ink sack. I don't really have tattoos, but I have friends get them and have those ink sacks. It's what it looked like. It was like a really thin layer of skin that had lifted and it was filled with liquid on like eight out of 10 of my toes. Like all the tiny ones were effed up. And um, I literally was just like, what? Like <laughs> now what is this? Like I am literally self destructing like as we speak. And I don't know what in me told me to do this, but I reached down and I ripped the skin off the top of one of them. And when I tell you there was fluid everywhere, all over me, all over my car seat, all over the floor, all over the window of my car. Um, of course, underneath that, it's just raw skin. Weirdly enough, it did not hurt for me to pop these or pull the skin off. It was really disgusting and weird. And it was just clear liquid that can't be like I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> but, <clears throat> Alas, I proceed to rip all of the skin uh, off these blisters that are that are forming on my feet. Um, I, I, that's the only thing I can think of to call them because that's just all I can think they looked like. But they were huge. They were covering my whole toes. And um, I proceed to walk into the party. I strap those sandals on my feet and I walk into the party. So I get there at four because that's what time it said to be there. There it are maybe two or three other people there. 
I don't know anybody. There's there's a man vacuuming still, like setting up decorations. I I arrived like at like maybe four fifteen because I, I I even thought I was late. No, I was very early to the party. Um, I thought this wasn't like a, <laughs> it was a casual thing. It was supposed to be like a casual fun thing, and of course I made it like so much more difficult than it needed to be, and. Um, so I'm literally just standing there on my, by myself, like, oh my God, like there's nobody for me to talk to and I'm standing here in a bikini. Like I just felt so weird. Um, even like the bartender wasn't really there yet. It was so weird. And um, there was like a group of girls who were sitting and I could tell they were all friends. And I was just like, usually I don't have a problem walking up to groups, but I was intimidated. I don't know why, I was very intimidated. Um, and so I'm walking around and I take my sandals off and keep in mind there's raw skin on my dogs like raw skin on my toes this whole backyard is grass so I'm being poked every step by grass in my raw toe skin which is now itching holy shit I I just felt my blood start boiling again it it was pain it was pain, like, and I didn't tell anybody. It gets worse. I will say my like saving grace at this party, I met a girl who had also just signed with the agency. Her name's Lexi and um, she was so sweet. We like stayed together pretty much the whole time. And like, if she wasn't there, I don't know what I would have done. Like it would have been pretty hard for me to like mingle because everyone was kind of like in their groups. Everyone was kind of established. It definitely gave like, when you first come into a strip club and you're trying to work vibes where everyone has their cliques and their friends and kind of felt like, I don't know, just very intimidating. And I would come try and, and talk to people. And I literally had a couple people like kind of shut me out of conversations or just like completely ignore me, um, which is fine. You know, whatever. I don't know if they maybe like didn't hear me or I don't know. I'm not going to assume or speak on their behalf, but, um, we were going, me and this girl Lexi were going around getting drinks, like trying out all the rides. This was like a carnival party. Like, so there was this giant shark, like ride thing to ride on, like the bulls um, or the cow ride thing. There were like the cups, there was a giant slide, pool, um, 420 bar, alcohol bar, dildos everywhere for some reason. Um, and it was, it was a blast. I will not lie. We were in the pool. We were like all over the rides. It was really fun. Um, so we're walking around. I'm trying to remember what bikini I was wearing. I was wearing a light colored bikini. I don't remember which one it was, um, but it was light. And I have the next put on thing in my arm. It's a form of birth control that they insert in your arm up here. And I am a lesbian. I don't have sex with men, but I had this when I still was cursed with a man in my life. And so my periods now are very irregular and I can never really know when they're coming and sometimes they'll happen multiple times a month. You know where this is going? I'm sure you do. So I go to the bathroom as one does when they're having frozen margaritas um, back to back. And I, okay, I, that was a little crazy. I didn't get too lit at this party. I just kind of wanted to hold a drink so I didn't look so awkward, but um, they were really good frozen margaritas though. But I go to the bathroom, pull down my underwear. What do you know? out of my period I've already been out there taking pictures with the with the professional photographers and the Doc Johnson photographers and it's been up my butt I've been twerking I've been and it's very obvious that I started my period it is bled through I'm just praying to God I did not get blood on the giant shark thing that I was just straddling um, so I did my best I could to wash the blood out and, you know, repair the situation. But the damage, the damage had been done, whether or not I popped a tampon in or what. Um, the damage had been done and I didn't want to like wash my underwear out in their sink. That's gross. I don't know. I just, it wasn't my house. I, I was so intimidated. So I told Lexi and she was just like, oh my God, okay, like I'll keep an eye like on that region while you're walking around. So it's great. We're, we're again having a good time and um, the day is moving forward. I'm meeting all the girls, or not all of them, but most of them. Every, 
everyone that I got a chance to talk to was really, really, really sweet. And I'm like so pumped to keep working with them. But I really want to show the goodie bag that they gave me the next day. So there were, there's a couple of things in here that are pretty funny um, that just ended up in here. So first of all, I think this bag is incredible. I'm keeping this and I'm using this for regifting. It's just a bunch of sex toys and hands and interesting stuff. Um, anything that is an actual toy, I did take out of here because I don't think I can show that on camera. But I got a Crystal Jellies Thin Down. Probably will never use that unless it's in a strap on. Um, I got a Pride Anal Trainer Set. I'm not going to show this because I kept the toys in by accident. But um, it's three different butt plug situations that are like train. I don't know. They're cute because they're like confetti. They're actually, they're really cute. I just, I don't know. The shape of these is a little bit interesting, but I do like this bag that Doc Johnson gave me. Super cute. Definitely gonna use that at the strip club. Um, I got a pocket racket. Racket in my pocket, racket. Isn't there a rap song about that? I don't know. Um, deep throat to go spray. I feel like I could re-gift that. Uh, I don't know where these, I think this just came from around my house while I was cleaning up. I will always just find random dollars. Doc Johnson hat. Um, we'll be repping for this video. Okay. Dry mouth spray. I'm going to use this while I'm smoking. <laughs> this. One of my extensions. Uh, this I'm really excited about. It's liquid vibrator. I've never heard of this in my life, but it's just this little thing that you put, okay, this is hurting me. You put it on your, I think your, I don't know. I'll read more into this, but it's just something you put on you and it's supposed to make you nut through liquid instead of like a toy which i think would be really fun for like traveling um and then loop of course and i got a couple of like pins like this one's a little pocket rocket um i thought my hair extension being in there was awesome i think i got a shirt too i don't know where it is but it says doc johnson physical education um it's really cute so yeah, I, I'm about to start getting into some scenes. I haven't done any yet. Um, and I have, I'm really nervous. Um, I'm excited, but it's just a whole new industry for me coming from dancing to this. This is totally about, you know, connections and um, dancing is a lot about skill and your mouthpiece and individual work, you know? So I'm moving from like an individual you're only, you only have yourself in the dancing world and everything is reliant on you and what you're doing and how much you do. In this world, it seems to me, um, so far it's a lot about networking, connections, um, working, getting to know people, following people on Instagram. I swear to God, before we even got into talking, when I was introducing myself to people at this party, it was, what's your Instagram? Let me follow you on Instagram. Like, not that we're friends and going to keep up with each other, but just so we can get that extra number, you know? Um, I really need to remember not to lose myself in this. I can totally see this as being something that I could get caught up in if I am not, um, you know, aware of that. And I'm just happy I have a background in like sex work already. Um, I love my job and uh if this is something else i can start loving too that would be super cool i just the coolest people i've ever met have been in the sex work industry or the adult entertainment industry or just the entertainment industry in general um the skeeviest people i've also met have been in the entertainment industry but i can also say that for the corporate world so you know um that's how i feel about that i'm trying to remember if there was anything else that happened at this party that I can remember besides me nutting. Oh, I'm not nutting, getting my period. I definitely didn't nut at this party. You can tell where mine's at right, my mind is at right now. I'm thinking about the liquid lubricator gel, liquid vibrator. I haven't had any caffeine. Oh my God, one thing that happened, I'm just, 
I can cringe at myself for 28 years about this. So I, there's like a big tennis court and they had a DJ in the back, dance floor type situation. Everyone's over there dancing. I'm holding a margarita, I'm chilling with Lexi, we're dancing. There's photographers walking around taking videos, pictures of the girls to send to Doc Johnson and you know, for my agency to use for whatever. And I turn and I see a camera coming my general direction somewhat so I start dancing I don't know what I was doing I was like doing some shit and I look back over he's pointed his camera at a completely different girl and she's staring at me and she just goes ah, and then like keeps going back I was like it's like when someone waves and you wave and they're actually waving at the person behind you like it, that but 20 times worse um but I, I think I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I like what who who cares? Um, everyone everyone I think has a little bit of social anxiety. Um, I just am in a point right now where I'm feeling very alone in my life. Um, and I don't have a lot of people except for people I don't know well that understand the kind of work that I'm doing and understand um, the kind of, I guess, emotional pressure it takes. So just doing all of this without any sort of support system besides social media has been interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's been bad. It's just, it's definitely been um, new for me and something I've had to adapt to because along with the things that people say that are good, along with the support I get, I get just as much, um, you know, rebuttal and attacks from people who don't think that um, what I'm doing is ethical, me being a dancer, me being involved in the sex work industry, which I disagree. And if you honestly believe that um, what I'm doing is unethical, you are ignorant. Um, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm trying really hard right now to figure out who I am. Um, I think I have a really good idea of who I am and I am just trying to, I guess, solidify and validate that to myself because I, for the past four years, have lived a life that I've kept hidden completely from my family and a lot of my friends. Um, now that is all out in the open because someone decided to out to that to my parents. Um, I feel like I need to be very careful about the steps that I take, um, bringing this all out to the light and not just shove it, you know, out in the open and it, I guess, lose myself over it. Um, in the past, when I've made big changes like this, a lot of times I will fall back into addiction um, and I am determined more than ever right now not to fall back into that pattern. Um, I have been completely sober besides marijuana for a couple weeks now, except for a couple of the frozen margaritas that I had at the party. And um, I did give myself permission to do that just because, I don't know, man, like it was a Saturday. I wanted to have fun. And I, the entire time was very aware of how much I was drinking and I, I at no point was I was I silly even like I never even really felt tipsy um but as far as drinking at the strip club I have not been doing that I have been drinking at home and I I'm not on any other substances besides marijuana um I would love to get back into shrooms but I just feel like so alone right now and so um I guess like I, I don't know. It just, I would literally like self-destruct, I think, if I took shrooms right now. But yeah, so I need to go get ready for the strip club, but I'm super excited for when I do my first scenes and I get to talk about that. Um, I met a lot of really cool porn stars. Um, we, there were a couple other agencies there. I met girls and guys. There were people who were there like in relationships, like industry, like porn star men and women together. And it was like the cutest thing ever. It's just, it is a whole new world. And I encourage everybody to go, not be porn stars, but to go through life with an open mind and see that people can be happy and doing things that maybe aren't so conventional or something that you personally would do. Um, I saw a lot of, of 
happiness and I felt a lot of good vibes and I felt a lot of good energy um, at this party, which is not something I could say for any corporate event ever. So um, I'm really excited. It's, it's going to be a cool opportunity. I can tell. Um, excited to keep updating you guys. So bye.